Yeah, I mean, just ask them. Obviously, there's no point going through the ones that they kind of got, but. Just because obviously, towards the end, there's some um, vector product, no, uh, yeah. finger product, and different version which they haven't. Yeah, exactly. Just see how you get on. Okay. That last couple quite large, like seven onwards. Yeah, it's bouncing. Right. We did that. Okay, so great setups. Okay. So uh, let's start with question one. And question one is really just um, your standard. Algebra manipulation. Okay. Yeah. And um, so, really, there are two um, ultimately the same methods, but slightly different way of approach. You can just um, complete. And when you do completing a square, um, the coefficient of x six, so half that, you get plus three squared. This is plus three squared. That gives you a plus nine. So you have to subtract nine, which will give you the correct answer, which is x plus three squared minus seven. But sometimes. It's um, slightly easier to use a more direct approach in the sense that you might have a, a coefficient of x squared that's quite hard to factorize. For example, if you have like a 4x squared plus 9x, to do the um, completing the square. The second method is expand directly x plus a. B. What if you x squared plus 2ax a squared plus b? And then you compare coefficient. Here you have 6x, you have 2ax, you can directly solve for a plus 3, and then b equals minus 7. The, um, this is called, um, they're both basically coefficient you use quite often in the future. And the second question is a Inequality, get throwing it. And often with this kind of inequality, you have two intervals. So if you have a inequality which is um, in first order of x, have only one interval for you to choose. For example, if you have, um, I don't know, x plus 4 is greater than 9, you can. Easily to solve that to have really just one interval, but in this case, you have x 6x plus 2. And from the first part of the question, we can complete in the square to solve um, a second order inequality. That's how you should solve this kind of question in the future. We have x plus 3 all squared minus 7. So x plus 3 bracket all squared is greater than 16. And now the thing to bear in mind is that both minus 4 and 4 can square to give you 16. So we have really two possibilities. This x plus 3 is greater than 4. So you take the... Um, positive sides and they'll give you s is greater than one. And the second case is you take the negative square root to give you s plus three is less than minus four. So
So x is minus, uh, is less than minus seven. And that gives you two interval. A way to visualize this is that you can draw the um, quadratic x minus three squared on the left will look something like this. It will touch the axis minus three, and we want that to be greater. Call that y equals. 16. And we can see that there are two possibilities to choose from. And that's um, represented in our solution here accordingly. To find the um, term independent of x in the expansion. Um, so to do this question, you have to know the binomial expansion. And at first look, the um, you might have quite a scary formula. You have to use um, a little bit of combination theorem. X, A, X plus b is equal to the sum zero to n of n i a x of i times b of m minus i. Obviously here n and i are all integers. And what we're doing here, this summing notation, first um, you're substituting i equals zero expression, and then plus um, the expression where you're substituting i equals one. And do we know how to I mean, 